Hi, I'm Dr. Jeff Middleton. Today's video is going to be about Atlas Orthogonal, 3D rendering of CT angiograms with venous phase, jugular vein entrapment, Eagle syndrome, and vagus nerve disorder. Uh, we'll start with the first thing that I saw. All right, so this is a case, a uh, woman in France, miserable, told she's a hypochondriac, doctors can't find anything wrong, everything comes back normal, uh, radiologists can't find anything wrong. So we did, uh, we told her to do a, a CT angiogram with venous phase and to put all the data on a CD. Uh, the tech has to set it at 6.625 millimeters uh, slice thickness to put on the CD. Uh, we told her to tell the tech that we're going to be doing 3D rendering of the CT and that's why we need all that data. So this is what we did. Here we are looking at the top. We took the top of her head off and now we're looking inside the uh, cranial vault and you can see the jugular foramen on the right is very large. That bone is eroded. Uh, on the left it's very small. Um, it's not the best angle to see it, but it's, a, it's much larger, or larger on the right. And that's the first thing we notice when people send us the CTs, even the regular CTs, you can check them yourself. Look on your own CT and see if there's a jugular foramen that is enlarged on one side. Uh, that tells us that the jugular vein has been under pressure and is eroding the bone. Uh, the afferent uh, ganglion of the vagus nerve sits in this jugular uh, foramen. So for this bone to be eroded like that, it's had to have a lot of pressure on the, on the jugular, um, on the uh, vagus uh, ganglion. And these people have all kinds of symptoms that are just, uh, don't make any sense to a lot of people, a lot of doctors. Okay, so that's the first thing we noticed. Uh, here we are looking at her from the front. This is the jugular vein. You can see how large it is. And you don't even see it on the left side. Here's another shot of it. Here we are looking at from behind. And again, we did a 3D rendering, so that's why we're able to see this stuff. Trying to figure this out in 2D, it, it's a nightmare. You, I don't even fault the radiologist for missing this stuff. I, I know it's there, and I can't even really see it on a 2D. Um, anyway, so 3D, so you, you do a 3D rendering, your 12-year-old can look at this and figure it out. Anyway, so here we are, we're looking at this. There's the jugular on the right, huge. On the left, you don't even see it. I can tell you that this atlas is out of place. It's rotated four degrees and is entrapping the jugular on the left so it's not even draining. The blood is not even draining out of the head on the left. Uh, here's another shot of it. Uh, I've removed a bunch of soft tissues. There's the chin and then you can see the jugular on one side. You don't even see it on the other. Another shot of the same, uh, the clavicle bones. and. Again, another shot from behind. And let's get some better images here. All right, so here we are looking down from the, from the top of the head. And here you can see the sinusoidal sinus. Now, what you'll see where it looks like the blood stops. And, and right there, all you see is bone. It's as if there's no, no vein there. It, it is there. It's just, um, well, you could call it atrophy. You could call it hypoplastic. Uh, the radiologist very often won't even mention it. And if they do, they'll say uh, the venous system is dominant on the right side in this case, or there's a hypoplastic sinusoidal sinus. Uh, and there's, that's about as much as they can describe as they describe on this. They'll go, uh, anyway, so the blood is really not going out, not draining through there. Let's get another shot. Here we are looking at the right side. This is the right side of the atlas. Uh, the vertebral artery, the vertebral artery going here, making a U-turn, and then going into the skull. This is that jugular vein. This is the uh, really the, the biggest vein leaving the head. It's almost like it's the only way out, out for all the main blood to get out of the head. Now here, you can see the styloid process. This is a styloid process. And you can even see this little line here is where it's supposed to stop. And all this is calcification of the ligament uh, of of the styloid ligament there, uh, the stylohyoid ligament. Anyway, so people get injured, there'll be upper cervical instability, and this is one of the ways, one of the things the body does to try to calcify it. And you'll see this, this 
encroachment on the jugular vein between the styloid and the transverse process of atlas. Here's another view of it. So here we go. So we're looking at it from the front. I've removed the jaw. I've removed a lot of the structures from the front of the neck. So now all you're seeing are, is these carotids, the bifurcation of the carotid. You see no jugular vein on the left. You see a big giant jugular vein on the right because this is the only exit out of there. And you see these huge tusk-like structures. Those are the styloid processes, how long they've calcified. And you can even see a line there where where it's supposed to have stopped. And you can see if it had stopped there, there's not a lot of, uh, it's, it's harder to entrap the jugular. It's very difficult to entrap the jugular there if the calcification stopped there. Uh, but since it goes down past the transverse process of atlas, you can entrap a jugular vein, which is what's happening on the left there. And it's also happening on the right. Look at how, uh, so this Eagle syndrome that they call it, uh, the ENTs have, have an easy fix for this. Well, they'll, they'll go in there and they'll break those off and release uh, those jugulars. Um, that's one way to do it, and sometimes it's the best way to do it. Okay, here's a, a 3D rendering. And here, we, let's get a better angle. There you go. There's the transverse process of Atlas. There's the styloid process. You can see there's no room for the jugular vein to exit. I'll let that run its course. And of course all the veins in the head are backed up and engorged. And the reason really we really care about this venous system is that the cerebral spinal fluid drains through a pressure gradient. That is there has to be no backup of pressure of the jugular veins for in order for the CSF to drain correctly. And if you start building up slowly over time those metabolites inside the brain, uh, you're going to get a lot of different well, disease processes. Uh, Parkinson's is a buildup of a metabolite in the brain. Uh, there's a lot of different problems that are built up in metabolites in the brain. Uh, so you want to be able to flush this. I can tell you by being an atlas orthogonist for 30 years, we'll take these atlases and we'll, we'll take the rotated atlases and unrotate them. They'll feel the, the it drain out of their head. Uh, they feel taller, lighter, the room gets brighter, uh, sense of well-being, lighter, just feeling good in their own skin. Um, I guess one of the reasons that these people get labeled as hypochondriacs is because they, they're just miserable and the doctors can't find anything wrong. Uh, so it's, it's actually a terrible, terrible thing that needs to be fixed. Here's another shot of it. I removed everything except the atlas. Here you can see that, there you go. I'll just even shut up. You can even see it better almost if I'm quiet. Um, you can see that entrapment in here. You can see that there's no room at all. All right. So these are those beautiful 3D renderings that we've done. Oh, yeah, it's actually here. That's a better shot. Oh, yeah, here we go. Let's let's get that. Let's scrub that through. How about right? There we go. So here you can see an aerial view looking down from the top. These oh, I twisted it too much, but the styloid. Let's back it up. I'm gonna, that's, that's not a good shot. All right, here's the styloid process and the transverse process. There's no room for the jugular. You can see a little bit of the jugular vein there, just a little blood training. Here you can see the styloid, uh, the transverse process. The styloid goes in front of the jugular. You can see how huge that is. I've got other ones that are real bad. This isn't even the worst case. Uh, let's see here. There's a good shot of it. All right. Okay, so let's go to the next one. All right, so we did ultrasound. We're real excited using this Clarius. This is an amazing ultrasound device. So what we'll do is we'll check the blood supply going in and out of the head. We'll check the carotids, the vertebrals, the jugular veins. We, we, we check everything, and we made, made huge changes in those two. So in this particular case, we have everything set. Uh, the blue is the blood leaving the head, and red is the blood going into the head. Uh, and we did pulse wave Doppler to measure the speed, but you're not going to see it on this one. So here you see this red is the jugular, I mean, I'm sorry, is the carotid artery. It's pulsing. It's not, not pulsing in this image, but 
trust me, it pulses and is bringing blood into the head. And this right, bright red spot, that is the jugular vein with the blood going the same direction. So we have a retrograde jugular vein on the left uh, because the pressure gradient is such that the blood is just going the wrong direction there. Uh, everything inside the body is under pressure. So all these pressure gradients have to be normal. Otherwise, uh, all kinds of pathologies are going to set up over time uh, and they're going to be hard to see. So there you have a retrograde jugular. Let's go to the next image. Okay, so this is an x-ray of that atlet, rotated atlas. Here we measured it to be four degrees. Get that out of the way. The atlas was rotated four degrees this way and trapping the left jugular. We adjusted her with the atlas orthogonal instrument. We got it down to two degrees. Uh, so we opened it up a little bit and that's not a bad adjustment. That's pretty good. Uh, this is an email I sent her uh, after the adjustment telling her we adjusted her atlas. From, we got it from four to two. I'll talk to her about her, her venogram in the future. Uh, one of the things is that the left vertebral artery, now in this case, well actually in all, all these cases, with the vertebral artery we'll check, we'll check the, the artery here as it goes straight up and then we'll check it as it right back in here. So in this case uh, the vertebral artery right here went from 58 centimeters per second to, to 250 centimeters per second and then the back in the back of it, it went from 44 centimeters to 186 centimeters. Uh, so major improvement in the blood supply going in the head. Uh, so that's basically what we saw. Oh, the elastography. We also do elastography with this. Um, one of the things that the Atlas orthogonal cares, orthogonist cares about is the hardness and softness of the soft tissue back in here. And you can dig in your own neck and, and feel how hard and tender it is. And then after the adjustment, all that gets soft and supple. So elastography checks the hardness and the softness of soft tissue. So we see big changes in the hardness and the softness, not to mention the fact that you can feel it yourself. Uh, so there was a big change there. Now, here we go. So this is that left jugular vein seven weeks after the adjustment. And here we have blood leaving the, that area at 62 centimeters per second. Um, I had better images of it, but I, I was so excited. I kept her up. I, I did like 10 minutes of just checking it and eventually it got done. So I, I really do have better images of this. I didn't save them. But either way, it's as if once we open up the atlas and the blood is slowly starting to drain out of there, it, it, the stream starts to pick up and the, the vein gets larger and larger and the stream gets better and better. And this is seven weeks from a vein that was retrograde. Uh, so we would like to do a, a have her get a, another CT angiogram with venous phase in Europe. And uh, obviously we'd love to check the speed of it or just send her to the ultrasound person in her neck of the woods and see what this is like as the months go by and by the end of the year, it'll be great. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so this is the Atlas orthogonal instrument. This is what we use to make, make the correction. Um, yeah, that's the machine there. I don't know if you can even get it on the image, but that's it. Uh, Eagle syndrome, upper cervical instability, we didn't, didn't get into that too much. CSF leaks, we didn't really get into that. Oh, these people will start popping leaks uh, because they're the backup of pressure. Uh, that's it. That's it for this case. And have a blessed day.